As we know that the ionic compounds consist of cation and anion. Qualitative analysis of salt is used to identify the ions present in the salt by analyzing its physical and chemical properties. This method only to identify the absence or presence of the particular ion and this technique not determine how much of particular ion is present. For this part we will determine the presence of cation and anion in a salt by using aqueous solution. Before we go further, let's recognize the colors for few common cations. The color of calcium, magnesium, lead, aluminium, and zinc are colorless and aqueous and white and solid. The short name for these elements to remember is Campaz. Meanwhile the color of copper is blue, iron 2 iron is green, and iron 3 iron is brown. To remember these colors for these metal ions just imagine the cloud or sky and a tree. The color of cloud represents of copper, the color of leaves for iron 2 iron, and the color of stem for iron 3 iron. These metals ion is tested with the sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide. First, the sodium hydroxide test. A few drops of sodium hydroxide are dropped into the test tube containing unknown cation in solution. Record the changes that happen to the solution. Next, the excess of sodium hydroxide is dropped into the test tube and record the observations. So, we confirm that salt containing calcium or magnesium form a white precipitate in excess. Meanwhile, salt containing lead, aluminium, and zinc, the white precipitate of these cations are dissolved in excess. And the last one the salt containing copper and iron is not changed which is the formation of precipitation of its color form. Second test is ammonium hydroxide test. A few drops of ammonium hydroxide is dropped into the test tube containing unknown cation in solution. Record the changes happen to the solution. Next. The excess of ammonium hydroxide is dropped into the test tube and record the observations. There is no precipitate form and salt containing calcium in excess. The white precipitate is formed in excess if the salt contains magnesium, lead, and aluminium. For salt containing zinc, the white precipitate is dissolved in excess of ammonium hydroxide. And the last one the salt containing copper and iron is not changed. As we concerned that, lead and aluminium share the same chemical properties when these cations are tested with sodium and ammonium hydroxide. So how to differentiate these cations? So, we just remember the rules that we have learned in previous topics. In this case, we can react the salt containing lead and aluminium with salt that contains chloride, bromide, iodide, or sulfate. For example, react the lead 2 oxide or aluminium oxide with sodium chloride. So, the final product of lead 2 chloride or aluminium chloride is formed. So here, lead 2 oxide is insoluble and aluminium chloride is soluble. Now let's move to the anion test. In this part we will determine the anion test by using the aqueous solution. So, how to remember for each anion test? Start with the blank pyramid, then write or draw any signs to represent the ions or elements. First start writing in the middle of the pyramid from bottom to the top. Then, complete the right side, from bottom to the top. Last one, finish the left side. Here is a summarization of the common anion tests. In this case, the emblems of football clubs are chosen. To read this figure, start in the middle, from bottom to the top. Then, read the right side from bottom to the top. And the last one, start reading from the top to the bottom. Here is a short description about the football clubs in England. Someone said that Southampton, Newcastle, and Chelsea are the strong club compared to Fulham, Arsenal, and Brentford. Once we heard it, we just loud of laugh. So, what are the emblems represent? Southampton represents sulfate, Newcastle shows for nitrate. Chelsea represents chloride, followed by sulfate and carbonate. For the right side, start form the bottom is iron, silver and barium. The left side, all is hydrogen. How to determine the test of anions for carbonate, sulfate, chloride and nitrate? In this case, start from the top of the pyramid, which is carbonate. To test the presence of carbonate, the dilute acid is used. 
drop a few of dilute acid to the lime water. As the result, the air bubble is produced and the lime water turns cloudy. This is show that the carbonate ion is present. The air bubble is carbon dioxide gas which turns lime water into cloudy due to the formation of calcium carbonate. For the next test is sulfate. To test the presence of sulfate, please look at below the sulfate. It is chloride ion. So, for testing the presence of sulfate, first, dilute hydrochloric acid is added to the sulfate salt. Second, add barium chloride to the solution. The result is white precipitate is formed which is represents barium sulfate. Barium sulfate is an insoluble salt and form as white precipitate. The reason why hydrochloric acid added is to prevent precipitation of barium carbonate. Third is chloride ion test. Follow the same step as sulfate by looking at the below of chloride ion. It is nitrate. For this test, dilute nitric acid is added followed by the silver nitrate solution. As the result, the white precipitate is obtained. How this happened? Silver ion from silver nitrate combined with chloride ion to form silver chloride. Silver chloride is an insoluble salt that form white precipitate. The nitric acid added is to prevent the formation of silver carbonate and silver sulfate. The last test is nitrate ion. Same step as before, the sulfate ion is positioned below the nitrate. First is add the dilute sulfuric acid followed by iron 2 sulfate. After that, carefully add the concentrated sulfuric acid to the solution. The brown ring is produced. The concentrated sulfuric acid reacts with the nitrate ion to form nitrogen monoxide. The nitrogen monoxide combines with iron 2 sulfate to form a brown complex which appears as a brown ring. This test also called as brown ring test.